Coming up on AEA Amplified, Avidyne unveils its brand new Vantage flight display system. From the Aircraft Electronics Association, this is AEA Amplified, a podcast for aviation's technology experts, with your host, Jeff Hill. Hello, and welcome to AEA Amplified, sponsored by Genesis Aerosystems, a Moog company and a leading provider of integrated avionics systems for military and civil operators around the world. From rugged integrated flight displays to digital flight control systems for rotor and fixed wing aircraft, Genesis has solutions to increase safety and decrease pilot workload. To learn more about how Genesis can help your customers, visit genesis-aerosystems.com. Hi everybody, I'm your host, Jeff Hill, for this August 25th, 2021 edition of AEA Amplified. And our guest today, I'm very pleased to have with us is Dan Schwinn, and he's the president of Avidyne Corporation and an AEA member company since 1995. Dan, thanks so much for joining us, and your company made a huge announcement in late July, just prior to the start of AirVenture, when you introduced the Vantage flight display system for general aviation aircraft. Can you tell us a little bit about Vantage and how that came about? Hi, Jeff. Yeah, it's great to be here with you today. And uh, the Vantage announcement was an exciting announcement for Avidyne. Um, it's a large screen flight display, the first in a series that we're going to have aimed at general aviation applications, as well as some applications in advanced air mobility and helicopters. Uh, what we announced prior, just prior to Oshkosh and demonstrated at Oshkosh was our 12-inch display and a PFD and an MFD variant, and the first certification is going to be on the Cirrus aircraft aimed at the almost 4,000 aircraft that were originally equipped with our first-generation Integra system, of which uh, there's many of them installed and people really like them, but they are getting to be a little bit older, so we wanted to provide uh, a, an update as our as our first product in, in what will be a line of, of flight displays. And I know you, you know the initial certification, as you announced, will take place with those Integra-equipped Cirrus aircraft. So, so why Cirrus? Well, the Cirrus aircraft, uh, we were very, you know, we're very familiar with Cirrus, having been involved with the, the company from its early days, and we had a lot of demand from those customers. But I think another thing that really made the Cirrus a logical choice for us is the fact that the way that they're set up with the side stick and the center console allows us to do a two-screen large format system which will really just show off some of the wonderful benefits of the Vantage system in a way that some of the follow-on products that are aimed at aircraft with smaller instrument panels you know won't necessarily quite be able to do so we're also very familiar with the associated systems on the Cirrus and we wanted to make this an economical upgrade for people so we're able to take advantage of the existing things like their engine instrument uh, data concentrators and all their uh, the the traffic systems and data link weather systems were originally sold with those aircraft and so forth. So we're you know we're we're aiming at making this sort of a fleet wide economical upgrade for those people that that choose to upgrade. We we haven't uh, we haven't uh, ended the service on the first generation products and and we really think we can continue to service those for a long time to come. But a lot of people are looking for something new and and now we're going to have it for them. And I know you've also said um, that eventually the Vantage product line will include a wide range of display sizes, uh, along with certifi certification across a wide range of aircraft and the associated legacy equipment, as you mentioned. So can you elaborate just a little bit more on that? Well, this is the, the first of a line of products based on a third generation processor platform. And you know, as you would expect, it has a lot of processing horsepower allowing us to do you know really high resolution synthetic vision lots of colors you know high high frame rates interface with lots of different uh, other kinds of graphical uh, products and uh, so you know it will be followed the 12 inch screen that we are using in the vantage 12 on the Cirrus is it's great it's large um, it'll be beautiful and it won't fit in a lot of aircraft so you know we do plan to, to follow it with something that is more size appropriate for for aircraft that don't have uh, you know have, typically have a yoke going through the instrument panel, and you know you're always going to have a six pack there, so we'll we'll have something for that. Um, but uh, you know this was this was for us a logical place to start. We've had a really enthusiastic market reception. I will say that probably the most asked 
question other than you know when can I get it for my you know fill in the blank aircraft was really from the with the aircraft from Piper and Columbia Aircraft at the time that were also equipped with the first generation Integra. So that'll certainly be something we look closely at in terms of that market. Um, and then after that, you know, something that'll fit into, you know, the majority of, of general aviation fixed wing aircraft. And talk a little bit about the installation process. Which shops will be approved to do the installations? How does that work? Well, Avidine has a, a pretty large channel of dealers, uh, and I think most of whom are AEA members, or all of them. Um, and uh, But we're going to start with our dealers that are some of our bigger Avidine dealers that also happen to be have a big business around Cirrus aircraft. So there, there's a handful of our dealers that you know, do a lot of Avidine business, but also do a lot of Cirrus business, and they're really familiar with, with the Cirrus aircraft. And, and one of the reasons we're doing that is that we're trying to get this installation process to be something that can be done quickly and repeatably with a very high uh, you know, satisfaction on the base of the customers. Unlike most of our products, where our dealers basically have to act as a system integrator because all these aircraft that come through the door are different, in this case, the aircraft are substantially similar. And so we're hoping to put out probably more installation information than we typically do with a product. In other words, with one of our products, we'll typically say, you know, here's how you hook it up, here's what the connectors do. It's up to you to figure out, you know, where you put it and you know what it's connected to and all that kind of thing. In this case, we're going to try and put out a little bit more comprehensive uh, installation package that has some drawings for the instrument panels and has specific wiring diagrams for the aircraft. Um, and allows these installations all to be done consistently. So we're going to work with a handful of dealers that are very experienced with Cirrus and with Avidine to get that installation process honed. And then as, as we get that to where we feel confident in it, you know, it'll it'll become available to those dealers of ours that that do work on Cirrus, which I think is probably quite a number of them, but but probably not all of them. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. And so you touched on it a little bit, but I'm sure one of the questions that you're getting asked from your customers is, you know, when do you expect to maybe have the first generation available for sale and installation? What's the timing of that? And then also, uh, how much does it cost? Right. So what we've said about availability is that we expect it sometime uh, next year, hopefully in the in the earlier part of the year. Um, we as a company so far haven't been really impacted by all the electronic supply chain stuff you read about every day. And one of the reasons for that is that all of our existing products, we have our supply chain very much in place. Launching a new product with a bunch of new, this is a absolutely from scratch design. There are some internal concerns about uh, what's going to happen as we start ramping production in terms of getting parts. So uh, that we have along with, you know, sort of the supply chain and the COVID issues, we have the usual, you know, FAA certification issues, which, you know, for something like this uh, for us, uh, uh, should be fairly straightforward, but we haven't been too specific about exactly when it's going to be available. Hopefully later in the year we will be. The, the price is a, a retail list price of uh, $25,000 for the two displays, which includes uh, all the options that it comes with. It includes dual uh, attitude reference systems, and it includes all of the things that are sometimes uh, optional on, on other systems, such as synthetic vision or whatever. So that price includes everything, the two displays. Uh, and and uh, all all the features that you need, so that that's um, that's where we are on this uh, for this. One question we are frequently asked is, you know, can I put in one and not two? And we're certifying it um, as two systems. It's a different. It's a really quite a different size than the existing ones, and the interfaces are quite different. So we're we're hoping and expecting people basically do it as a as a pair. And once again, we are visiting with Avidine President Dan Schwinn here on AEA Amplified, sponsored by Genesis Aerosystems, a Moog company. And Dan, now that you've had your product announcement, the initial announcement um, just prior to Oshkosh, um, talk a little bit more about the feedback that you have heard from your current customers. And I would imagine that the show at Oshkosh was was quite busy for, for your team there. It seemed like every time I, I walked by your booth, uh, it was jam-packed with, uh, with pilots and aircraft owners. How did that go for you? Well, Oshkosh was exceptionally busy for Avidine. I don't think I can remember a show event that, that has been this busy, especially when we first opened 
after having had the product introduction, our booth was completely jammed for the first bunch of hours of the show, um, which was which was terrific. And some of the feedback we you know some of the feedback was you know when can I get it for my aircraft and my aircraft is not a Cirrus, so there was a certain amount of that. But really, a lot of the feedback was that people were really happy to see that we were coming into the market with a product that was. Uh, reflected Avidine's values uh, of simplicity and great design. You know, some of the products that are out there now that people have to choose from, you know, they're very capable products. In some cases, they may be sort of more general purpose and, and more capable than people really want or need. And, and you know, what we introduced was a the PFD variant really is a very specific PFD product. It's even, it has even less controls on it than its predecessor. Um, and way, way less than its competitors. And I think there's a whole branch of the market that says, you know, this is terrific. I just want something that sits there and does its PFD thing. I want it to be beautiful, I want it to have synthetic vision, I want to be able to have a touch screen, all that kind of thing. But I, I don't need it to be a multifunction display and a navigation system and an engine instrument, a hundred other things too. So I think we got we got really, really good feedback on that. I think there was uh, a tremendous uh, appreciation for the, the the integration and familiar integration with the ifds and also the familiarity so one of the things that we've said is that if you are flying the first generation integra and you've updated your uh, gps as an autopilot to the ifds and the dfc 90 which a lot of serious people have the transition time from your existing integras 15 year old integras to these new ones is going to be extremely short because they're a combination of our earlier very simple user interface that we had on the first generation products and the IFD user interface. So I think that's something that that people very much appreciated. One of the things that we heard as well was, gee, you know, I've looked at some alternative products and there's so many options and it's so complicated and the configuration, we don't we don't have any options or configurations. This is one, you know, this is how it comes. And I think people really appreciated that as well. The feedback was all positive. You know, the only negative is how fast can I get it and when can I get it for my airplane? I've got, you know, as you know, there's a million different general aviation airplanes with all kinds of different equipment that people want to interface to and all of that. And, you know, of course, Avidine's got a long history of interfacing with lots of different things. So, you know, we'll work on that. But uh, that was, we had a really, really strong show, uh, tremendous uh, feedback. Um, the online response has been great. So, so, so far, so good with this announcement. And of course, AirVenture Oshkosh was not the only show this summer, uh, and the Vantage flight display system is not the only news coming from Avidyne uh, so far this summer. In fact, back in June during the new product introduction session at the AEA convention in Dallas, you also announced the Skytrax 200 dual band ADS-B in receiver. So can you tell us a little bit more about that new product and what it offers to pilots and aircraft owners? The Skytrax 200 is the successor to the Skytrax 100, which we've had out for a couple of years now. And the Skytrax 100 was a, a UAT band ADS-B in product. And a lot of people add ADS-B to get the weather broadcast. That's kind of a key part of, of what people do with ADS-B, the traffic as well. And with the UAT in only product you in the US, you get the, the rebroadcast so you can see most traffic. What the thought behind the dual band one was that really, as the markets evolve, most people have chosen to use the Mode S1090 ADS-B out as their ADS-B compliance. And so there's some advantages to having that as a direct input. The other thing that is the case is that as we saw in 2017 through 2019 in the US, the big ADS-B equipage period due to the mandate that we had beginning of 2020, what we're seeing is even without as specific a mandate as the United States had, in the rest of the world, what's going on is, is something similar. There's a, there's a ton of ADS-B equipage going on, ADS-B in and out. It's at the top of the list of things that people want to do for their aircraft. And in the rest of the world, the UAT channel is not in use. So, you know, the, 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 the Skytrax 200 really accomplished two things for us. The first one was to provide a and improve performance for all of our US-based customers. For, for our recent versions of the Skytrax 100, it's upgradable to a 200 with just a software upgrade. The older ones require a trade-in. And the second initiative was really for the rest of the world to provide a uh, Mode S in capable ADS-B product as they go. We obviously have, we have several choices for ADS-B out. 
uh, transponders, and but there, there really hasn't been that much equipage with ADS-B in in the rest of the world, and so now there's an option out there uh, for, for that capability. So the Skytrax 200, is, as you said, we announced it at the AEA. It's been shipping now for a few months, and the reception's been good to that product uh, for both in both of those kind of market segments. And you know, one of my favorite events at Air Venture every year is the uh, the annual press conference that you that you host. Been, um, I was fascinated there. One of the announcements you made there uh, at Air Venture was you talked about Avidine's new partnership with Dedalion to develop and certify artificial intelligence-based avionics vision systems. So can you tell us a little bit more about that partnership and what it means for Avidine moving forward in the years ahead? Sure, Jeff. We we announced that partnership there in, in with Dedalion, which is a Swiss AI specialty company for aviation uh, applications. Um, and uh, we also had, as you know, uh, a small booth separate from our main booth uh, with, with the Dedalian uh, demonstration going on. And, and what the thought is with the artificial intelligence is that, you know, artificial intelligence has worked its way into all many different aspects of your life. In some cases, they're online functions, you know, where, you know, Google Photos is scanning and picking out people that look the same and all kinds of that. And, but, but really another, one that many people are seeing is that you know cars have cameras in them with AI systems to do lots of different things. They recognize the lines and they recognize the signs and they see somebody stepping in front of you and they do lots of different things. Many of the things you do in a car with an AI don't have anything to aren't particularly useful for an airplane, but there will be a whole host of different applications of interesting things you can do with AI in an airplane. The big difference is that in an airplane, it's got to be certified. In a car, the kinds of certifications that are done are very different and nowhere near as stringent for the kind of, of technology we want to bring to bear. So our partnership with the Dalian really can be looked at as the functionality of AI, which is there's lots of exciting things to do, but also, and very importantly, is the certification of AI in safety critical capabilities. And so, you know, we're getting started on a significant groundbreaking certification program with both the ASA and the FAA to establish how one certifies a neural network in an airplane to do something that's safety critical. And that process is getting started. We're also developing a product. The first product, as we talked about, is a is a traffic or, you know, detect a detection system. Um, and, 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 you know, if, because it, this particular system uses a visual light camera, it can only see things like a person could see. You got to be able to see something in order for this to, to, to be able to tell you about traffic. But, you know, we can put cameras around the airplane. The system is never distracted. It's never looking in the other direction. It doesn't get tired or sleepy. It doesn't have to do other things. It can, it can work 100% of the time. So we see this as being really interesting for our, our helicopter customers and some of the advanced air mobility applications. But that's just the very first application of the AI. Right now, we're out to certify that and to show what the method is going to be that we certify future future AI-driven functions. Well, Dan, it's been quite an exciting summer, I know, for you and your entire team there at Avidyne. And we've covered a, a lot of ground in just a short amount of time here on AA Amplified. But is there anything we missed or that you'd like to add or share with our listeners? Well, uh, th uh, thanks for having me, Jeff. This has been great. We've been happy at the, the reception that we've received and we're you know really looking forward to getting more and more of our dealers involved in this project we just have had the first few discussions of course there was quite a few of our dealers at Oshkosh and, and then we've had some follow-up discussions and they're all excited to, to get going on it and as are we so you can be sure that we're working away trying to get this thing to market and we're looking forward to uh, uh, you know probably briefing at some of your connect conferences our, our progress as well and you bet. Thank you so much for joining us. That is Avidyne President Dan Schwinn here on AEA Amplified. To learn more about Avidyne, you can visit them online at avidyne.com. And you can also check out the upcoming September edition of Avionics News Magazine, which will have a feature story. In fact, it's going to be the cover story. So there's a little tip for you, and that'll be about the Avidyne Vantage flight display systems. You can read all about that. That article will publish both digitally and in print on September the 1st. So you can check that out at avionicsnews.net. 
or download the apps for both uh, Android and iOS devices. And before we go, let me do remind our listeners of some important items. Uh, the AEA has unveiled the dates for two Connect conferences in the United States later this year. And the first one will take place on September 29th and 30th. That will be the East Connect Conference in Orlando, Florida. And then again on October 27th and 28th, the West Connect Conference will be in Reno, Nevada. Registration is open along with hotel information for each of those two events at aea.net slash connect. And then also excited to announce that the AEA will be going to Europe this year. So the Connect Conference will take place in Cologne, Germany, November 17th and 18th. And that will be at the Hyatt Regency Cologne. Again, registration for that event is also online at aea.net slash connect. And finally, if your company is hiring, don't forget to post your career opportunities on the AEA Jobs Board at aea.net slash jobs. Free resume posting is also available for the job seekers, and you can check it out at aea.net slash jobs. That's going to wrap it up for today, and we hope you can join us again soon for another episode of AEA Amplified, sponsored by Genesis Aerosystems, a mode company. To learn more about Genesis and its full range of products, visit genesis-aerosystems.com. Until next time on AEA Amplified, so long, everybody, and be safe.